Welcome back to FLJ, Michael here. Fedora 38 is out and with it comes not only a technical modernization, but GNOME 44 is also unleashed on the masses once again. Everything you need to know about Fedora 38 is here. Let's give it a start. Fedora is one of the mainstays in the Red Hat Cosmos. Behind the Linux distribution Fedora is the Fedora project, which is mainly financed by Red Hat. The point of this is that Red Hat pursues a maintenance of its value chain. An essential part is Red Hat Enterprise Linux RHEL. Fedora itself does not contribute directly to this. But the indirect contribution is significant because by funding Fedora through money and people, they want to ensure a solid foundation for RHEL. So Fedora acts as an upstream distro for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So the point where new technology are put in place, the entry point for you and me. However, there is also a great Linux distro that is available free of charge and covers much more than just the desktop and the form of the workstation edition. Fedora offers the following editions in addition to the workstation. Fedora Server as a server operating system. Fedora IoT as an open source platform for Internet of Things ecosystems. Fedora Cloud as a minimal OS for public and private cloud environments. Fedora Core OS as minimal, automatically updated and container-focused OS. What's new? Linux kernel 6.2, GNOME 44, unified kernel image UKI to secure boot process, OS3 native container, updated packages like Ruby 3.2, GCC 13 or PHP 8.2. The minimum requirements for Fedora 38 is a 2 GHz dual core processor or newer, 2 GB of RAM or more, and 15 GB of disk space or more. More is always better here. By the way, the 2 GB RAM refers to a sparse bin, for example the XFCE edition. For Fedora with GNOME, I would recommend at least 4 GB, better 8 GB or more. Fedora is a semi rolled distro, means the middle between LTS and rolling, so newer than LTS, but not quite as much movement as rolling. Don't misunderstand, Fedora always delivers the latest kernel and important components are already refreshed, but not every package as it is the case with rolling distros. Fedora supports 64-bit architecture and ARM. The package manager DNF is included to manage the RPM packages. If you want to get started with Fedora, you have to download the ISO image and burn it to a USB device or DVD. Once the ISO is completely downloaded, you should verify it. I have already shown you how to do this in a separate video. Just have a look in any case of questions. The URL is in the description. Once the ISO is on your hard drive and also be successfully tested, you can install. In order not to go beyond the scope of this video, I will publish a separate installation video for Fedora. There I show step by step the encrypted installation, including the setup of correct ButterFS subvolumes. This is important if you want to create snapshots, e.g. with timeshift, etc. You're welcome to take a look at the installation process. I think this would clear up any ambiguities. If there are any uncertainties, just switch on here as well. Let's come to important hacks and commands. For me, the following commands are the most important in Fedora. System update, sudo dnf update. Apply security patches only, sudo dnf check minus update minus minus security. Refresh Flatpak, sudo Flatpak update. The fully automated chain looks like this, sudo dnf update minus y and then sudo Flatpak update minus y. Just a hint, applying only security patches is particularly interesting with CentOS and RHEL as their focus is on stability in the server environment. With Fedora the focus is different, so I would not recommend only applying security patches but keeping all packages up to date as Fedora offers. If the frequency of Fedora is too high for you, this distro is probably not the best choice for you and sooner or later you may have a look at a different LTS distro. 
Fedora is especially interesting for developers who need the latest interfaces etc. but also for ordinary desktop users who find the package levels of other LTS distros like Ubuntu or Debian too old and at the same time and don't want as much movement with all packages as it is present with rolling distros. There everything is constantly in motion. This means newer packages, but still a minimum rel quality standard at Fedora. My Fedora 38 installation occupied 5.9 GB of the disk. The initial benchmark value in memory consumption was 1 GB. The number of installed packages after the first start was 1802. Let's have a look what we have at the moment, what measurements. With 6.6 GB from the disk occupied. Currently, there are 1.6 GB memory occupied. And at the moment, there are 1811 packages installed. And currently, there is no Flatpak package installed. On the release date and thus the time of creating this video, Fedora 38 ships GNOME Shell 44.0. Fedora ships GNOME Shell without any significant customizations. That means it is vanilla GNOME. Here too the signature of Red Hat is recognizable, because Red Hat also maintains good relations with the GNOME project, which is why an adjust adjustment of the releases has ceased. So, usually a new GNOME version comes out a few weeks before a new Fedora version, which then debuts directly with Fedora. So you can expect an empty desktop. To get things moving, you can either use a function key or move the mouse. You can get to the launchpad by clicking on the top left here on Activities. Now the screen will shrink a little and a dock will appear at the bottom. This dock has nine dots on the right. You can see them here. If you click on it, you will get to the launch pad and see all installed apps. In my eyes, this workflow is going completely in the wrong direction on the desktop. I know some of you will now cry out and argue that with GNOME Vanilla is wonderful to use with a trackpad and keyboard shortcuts. Maybe so. If you work exclusively with a notebook or laptop and with a trackpad, that's all good. But I work on the desktop with keyboard and mouse in everyday life and the concept doesn't really work, at least for me. I therefore lack extensions to set up a desktop that is functional for me. The GNOME concept of Ubuntu suits me better on the desktop. With Fedora, I would have to start directly with extensions such as dash to dock or start installing them. The wallpaper supplied with Fedora 38 looks good overall. You can also switch between light and dark in the settings under Appearance. How unfortunate that neither GNOME nor Fedora provide the option of color accents yet, as Ubuntu already offers since version 2204. This will probably come with GNOME 45. We will see. Let's come to the pre installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.2 as browser, there is Firefox, an email client is not pre installed, as Office package, there is LibreOffice, and as software container, we have Flatpak. Let's check the general pre-installed software. Compared to its predecessor, Fedora 37, nothing significant has changed here. There are still stock GNOME apps, but no mail client. You have to install one yourself, e.g. with the GNOME Software Center. All in all, a slim software stack at the lower edge of the pain threshold for desktop users. If you need more apps, just click here on Software Center and then search for your app. For example, if you want to install LibreWolf, just click here and then install. You can also check the source. Here it is a flat pack package. If you need more software, you can find it here. Fedora has some kind of speciality to handle third party software sources. In the GNOME Software Center, click on Main Menu and then on Software Repositories. Just wait a second. And then you can on the one hand side check all available repositories 
And on the other hand side, you can deactivate repositories you don't need. For my example, I would deactivate Google Chrome as I don't use this browser. So I can show you how this process works. Enter your password and here we go. Google Chrome is now not active as a package source. The handling of ButterFS subvolumes is still debatable. So if you install without the deviations I suggested during my installation regarding subvolumes, you cannot create snapshots with a tool like Timeshift after the installation. Unfortunate, but doesn't seem to bother the majority of Fedora users so you don't change it right at the beginning during development. A graphical package management is still not offered, either GNOME Software Center or down into the console with DNF. Not a disaster, but it could be more comfortable. DNF Dragora is still just a playground and not suitable for productive use in my eyes. I personally have reconsidered my opinion on the half yearly new versions. Currently it's fine for me. It fits the target group well and so everything is fine from my point of view. Let's come to the closing notes. Fedora 38 delivers clean results and performs well. The system is agile, reacts quickly and that in a VM. I did not encounter any seconds of pause or the like. Kernel and software are up to date, which is something to look forward. However, there are no spectacular new features. Of course, you benefit from all the innovations in GNOME 44, but in my opinion, GNOME 44 is more of a refinant version without the big hits. That is by no means a bad thing. I think it's perfectly fine to include a version that stabilizes rather than revamps. As a Fedora user, you can expect a rounded package full of up-to-date tools, drivers and apps. Fedora 36 will probably end of support in the new future. You will then have to switch either to Fedora 37 or to the new Fedora 38 version. In half a year, in October, Fedora 39 will be released. Let's see what the developers come up with then. For the summer 2023, you are well supplied and positioned with Fedora 38. I am a fan of Fedora and in my eyes, it is a pleasant and modern version. What are your impressions of Fedora 38? Feel free to shout your opinions in the comments. Thank you for the kind attention. If you like watching Linux videos, then a free channel subscription is absolutely worth it for you. Just subscribe to my channel, give a thumbs up and press the bell. Then you'll get regular updates and we'll both get something out of it. Before I go, I would like to thank all my supporters. Then ladies and gentlemen, we will catch up next week, same time, same channel. Have a nice time. Peace. Mm -hmm.